Well, hello, friends. I wanted to uh, say happy Wednesday, uh, and I hope that wherever you are, you are uh, having a good day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I wanted to pick up on where we left off yesterday. Um, we, um, uh, we, I shared with you that uh, many years ago, I was invited to speak, and uh, I decided to speak on a heart to honor him, and uh, I came up with 12 things that have helped me um, live that abundant life that Jesus said he came uh, to give us. Uh, he told his disciples in John 10, 10, he said, the thief will come to steal and kill and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it uh, abundantly. And uh, so i uh, Thank, I thank him so much for the years um, of living that abundant life and uh, what I've come to call life at its best. And uh, so there are 12 things that uh, have just kind of helped me uh, stay centered around that. And uh, yesterday we talked about Jesus, a relationship with Jesus, where it all begins. And today uh, I want us to talk about um, growing uh, that growing is not an option. So um, these are the things that I want to share with you, and uh, I hope that it will help you uh, in your growing process. A few days ago, I shared uh, a song, um, uh, He's Still Working On Me, that was written by Joel Hemphill way back around 1980. And uh, just reminds me often uh, that he hadn't given up on me, that he's still working on me. And he can only work on me to the extent that I allow him to. So uh, we'll keep that in mind. But once we invite Jesus um, into our lives and accept him as our Savior, he comes to live in us. In John 15, 4, he says, live in me and I will live in you. Uh, the King James says, abide in me, and I will abide in you. So as we learn to live in him, we learn to rest in that relationship, to rest in what he's done for us in our salvation, uh, in our promise of eternal life, uh, that he has come to, uh, that he has come to live in us uh, through his Holy Spirit. And we just have, we learn to rest in him and to make our lives available for him to live his life out through us. Does that make sense? Well, living in relationship with him, I've discovered, is both life-giving and it's life-changing. Uh, we can't stay where we are and go with him. So if we follow him, We've got to be willing to trust and obey and go uh, where he leads us. And so uh, our heart is to grow in our relationship with him. I love Colossians 2, 6, and 7 that just says, And now, just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust him too uh, for each day's problems Live in vital union with him. Let your roots grow down deep into him and draw up nourishment from him. See that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. Let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he has done. And you know when we do that, and we are, we are letting him live his life out through us uh, when we're in the word and being close to him and letting him live in us and we're living in him. Uh, we find that our lives will be filled with joy and that it will overflow uh, into the lives of those around us. And, you know, joy and happiness uh, is different. We all want to be happy, but happiness depends on the circumstances and uh, if they're good, we're all good and happy and everything's fine. Uh, but when the circumstances are hard and difficult, then that happiness tends to fade away.
But joy is different because it's an inner attitude that we have just because he is living in us. And we know that in whatever the circumstances we go through, he is always with us and will help us uh, go through them, whether they're good or bad. So we're born into God's family instantaneously at the moment that we invite him into our lives and he comes in. But growing is a lifelong process. Growing is not automatic. It doesn't just happen. We don't just begin to grow. Uh, it's not something that uh, we don't have to work at, but we must consciously work at it. And it takes a lot of work and it takes discipline. Um, Philippians 1, 6 is one of my favorite verses. We shared it a few days ago uh, when Paul said, he who has begun a good work in you will continue uh, until that day uh, when it's finally fi finished on the day when he returns. Uh, a few verses later, we read that he is at work within us, giving us the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. And that's Philippians 2.13. I love those verses. They kind of go together uh, because it reminds me that when I have a want to, to be in the word of God, if I have a want to, uh, to carry out whatever it is that the Lord has laid on my heart, I know that that is him at work within me. It's certainly not me, but it's him at work within me. So he's still working on me. And I assure you, if you know him, that he is still working on you. And there is nothing we can do uh, to stop that work except uh, not follow through with the things that we know will keep us growing. And so really, a lot of our growing, uh, our, our rate of growth is up to us. Uh, he's always willing. He loves for us to grow and uh, to be becoming more like him. I discovered a long time ago that he is a lot more interested in me becoming than what he is in what I'm accomplishing. Because if I'm becoming, I will be accomplishing those things that will bear fruit uh, in my life. So how do we grow? We know that God is at work within us, we said, through the work of his Holy Spirit, doing our uh, his part. Our part is to determine that we will spend time with him. And we have to determine that. Paige and I talk about that a lot of times. We won't just find the time to be with him, but we have to make the time. We have to uh, make spending time with him a priority in the schedule that we set for every day. It may be early morning. It may be middle of the day. It may be at nighttime, but whenever that time is, we have to schedule it or we won't make that appointment. Um, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Physically, we know that bread must be eaten to sustain life. It keeps us going. And bread, talking about the food that we eat. Uh, and Jesus must be invited into our daily walk to sustain our spiritual life. We eat our food to sustain us physically, uh, but we have to invite him in and give him time to pour into us the things that will sustain our spiritual lives. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, years ago, and I found it to be true, that sometimes um, that there's a difference between our physical hunger and our spiritual hunger. Uh, with our physical hunger, we eat when we get hungry. And sometimes our stomach growls and uh, it begins to feel empty and we know that it's time uh, to fill up again. Uh, but sometimes with our spiritual hungry, hunger, uh, we have to eat until we get hungry, if that makes sense to you. Uh, there are times when I can't wait to get into the Word, when I have set that time aside and, and I'm looking forward to it. I may have a, a verse or a passage um, on my mind, and, uh, and, and so it's easy. There are times that uh, I have a lot of things on my mind. Uh, my mind may be overloaded with all kinds of things, and so I come... Uh, to that time with the Lord and getting his word and my mind just is all 
it, it just seems like it's it's just overcrowded and it, it there's a lot going on and I have to begin to read on those days and read out loud uh, and once I begin to read out loud and the Holy Spirit begins to bring that word alive in me then I begin to be hungry and I want more and um, so if you're not hungry today you ask God to develop within you a spiritual hunger, a hunger for his word, a hunger to be with him. And he will give you that hunger. And the way to go about it is to be actively uh, pursuing him and to open that word up and to begin to read aloud. Uh, you can turn to a verse that you may know or a passage that's special to you, uh, but begin to get into it and rest assured that he will begin to speak to your heart. Um, in addition to feeding on the word and being in touch with him uh, through prayer and prayer and the word of God go hand in hand. Uh, we really won't ever have a quality prayer life uh, until we begin to store the word of God in us and begin to pray the word of God. Uh, there are a lot of verses I have stored in my heart that I personalize. Uh, and when you know, I, I, I make it mine, and I sometimes put my name in it, uh, and it becomes mine, and uh, that becomes prayer. We pray God's Word, um, and then I thank Him often for the devotional books I have. I have, a, if I could uh, turn this uh, video around or this uh, phone around, you would see I have shelves and shelves of books and a lot of them are devotional books. I think I have every Bible that I ever wanted. If I have a collection, it would be a collection of Bibles. Oh, and a collection of boots. I love boots. Uh, but my Bibles, I think I have every Bible that I've ever wanted. And I use every one of them. Um, so they're not a waste. And it's not they're not something that just, uh, they don't just sit on the shelf. They are used. Uh, but I have study materials. One of the best I can show you, uh, I love the Living Bible in the Life Application um, uh, edition. And uh, it has the notes down at the bottom. And the Life Application notes are exactly what they say. They help us apply God's Word in our lives. And uh, they go right along with the verses that we read. The other one is this big book. You can see how thick it is. Uh, the Believer's Bible Commentary by William McDonald. And uh, Murray gave me a copy years ago. In fact, this was his copy, Murray Ward Vidalia, 10902. Uh, it is in the New King James. It follows the New King James uh, version. And uh, it is, it, it's, I live in this. Uh, I live in this and the Life Application Notes. Uh, and then uh, I have a whole host of preachers and teachers and singers and songwriters uh, and uh, musicians and friends that he's planted along my path through the years. And they feed my faith. You feed my faith. You, my heart-to-heart -heart friends. Uh, and you grow me into his likeness. Um, and so uh, I take advantage of all the resources. Uh, we have never lived in a day when we have more available to us uh, to help us understand the Word of God uh, than we do today. Uh, it's just, um, th there's so much that you can't read it all. Murray's daddy always told him, son, uh, there's too much to read. There's more to read than you can read, so just read the best. And sometimes we have to overlook the good uh, to read the best. But uh, today, I thought it would be a good time for you uh, to think about some of the resources that you use uh, and some of the, uh, I, the some of the singers and songwriters uh, have written music. The old hymn writers, Fanny Crosby, has just written the Word of God uh, through her hymns. And uh, so if you love to sing like I do 
And uh, you love the old hymns like a lot of us do. And we're singing those hymns and learning a lot about the stories behind them. Then uh, they become a wonderful um, resource for us. Uh, but whatever it is, and, and whoever it is in your life uh, who, that feeds you and helps you know him better and gives you uh, fresh glimpses of him as they just live out their lives around you, um, tell them, stop and tell them. Uh, over the years, I've made it a practice that I write little notes. Sometimes I call, but most often I use a note and I write those people that come to mind daily who have helped me grow in my relationship uh, with Jesus and continue to help me grow. And they come from all walks of life. It's just amazing. And as you get a pen and paper down today, or whenever you're listening to this video, and you begin to just jot down some of those people, ask God to bring to mind some of them, you'll be amazed at the people he's used to help you grow closer to him. Well, I have enjoyed these few minutes together talking about growing in our relationship uh, with Jesus, that it's not an option, uh, that it's something that we uh, do because uh, we don't want to get stuck back at our salvation and never uh, learn the truths of his word and never learn how to trust and obey. So trust and obey, there's no better way uh, to know Jesus than to trust and obey. So I love you all. Let's keep growing. Let's keep making a difference for him out there on the tracks where he's planted us. And until next time, I'll just say, uh, let's keep it, stay in his word so that his word will be in us.